Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 1 Practice Problems. I've just realized I've been saying 2015 Winter 1 all this time, but it's 2014 Winter 2. What the heck? We are on problem 5, a capital idea, and we're going to be working on a bunch of asymptotic analysis problems here. And our first problem is to prove that if f of n is in little o of g of n, then f of n is in big O of g of n, which is true. We're going to start by looking at the definitions of little o and big O. So f of n is in little o of g of n exactly when for all positive real constant c, there is a positive integer n naught such that for all integers n greater than or equal to n naught, f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n. And notice this says for all real constant c, there's a positive integer n naught so that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n. So we're saying no matter how we scale g of n, no matter how big or small we make it by a constant factor, f of n is still smaller than it for sufficiently large n. That is different than big O. Big O says that there is a constant c and an initial n and naught such that f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n. This says no matter what constant you pick, if you get to large enough n values, you'll get there. So let's work with that definition. This is an if then, so we get to assume the antecedent to prove the consequent. We will assume f of n is in little o of g of n. So for all constants c, uh, there is an n naught such that uh, f of n is less than or equal to c g of n for n greater than or equal to n naught. We need to prove that f of n is in big O of g of n. And that just requires picking a constant and an n naught. And we already know for all constants there is an n naught, so we can just say let uh, C sub big O, so this is the big O C, it's not the same C as this one, but we're going to let it be 1 by assumption n naught for big O exists such that f of n is less than or equal to C for big O g of n, which is just g of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught for big O. And that's it. That concludes our proof. This is a fairly straightforward one. After this, we'll move on to the second part of problem five.